your uh, uh, and uh, hive just like your pig and hive uh, apache impala is again a query uh, like it provides you interface to access uh, your hadoop using queries uh, impala is open source native ex analytic data analytic database for apache hadoop like uh, it is shipped by vendors such as cloudera mapar and oracle and your yeah, amazon so these are the people who contributed uh, for your yeah, impala okay as we as we already uh, talked about impala uh, sorry we talked about uh, pig and hive so it is again a query language okay your uh, impala is a massive parallel processing sql query engine for processing huge volume of data that's stored in hadoop cluster in other words impala is highest performing sql engine giving rdms like experience which provides the fastest way to access data that is stored in hadoop distributed system now means like we we talked about hi we talked about uh, uh, pig and so why we look why we are uh, worried or bothered about this that we need something new right here and why we want impala now so impala combines the sql support to what we have already seen in the case of other one that uh, it works like your sql and uh, multi user performance of the traditional analytic uh, analytic uh, database and scalable and flexible of apache hadoop by utilizing the standard components such as hdfs hbase metastores yarn and other one with impala uh, users can communicate with hdfs hbase using sql query in the fast way comparing to comparing to the other sql engines like hive impala can read almost all file format such as your parke avro rc files used by hadoop impala uses the same metadata sql system uh, like your hive sql how the uh, hive identify the syntax so your sql syntax are the same one your odbc drivers and user interfaces of your same as your like uh, uh, apache hive and provides a familiar and unified platform for batch batch process uh, batch oriented or the real time query uh, unlike your apache hive impala is not based on map reduce algorithm it implements a distributed architecture based on the dermal process that is responsible for all the aspects of the query <clears throat> uh i will say like uh, the advantages of your uh, impala is like using impala you can process data that is stored in hdfs at uh, lightning fast speed uh, with traditional sql knowledge okay so we are repeatedly talking about sql knowledge sql knowledge so uh, as i already told you that do you have little bit uh programming knowledge or those who are within the database field or only knowing queries and this they have a good uh, opportunity right here to explore what is uh, pig or what is hive and what is impala now we are talking about advantages of impala since the uh, data processing is carried uh, where the data resides on the hadoop cluster it 
data transformation and data movement is not required for the data stored on the Hadoop while working with Impala. Using Impala, you can access the data data that is stored in HDFS, HBase, or Amazon S3 without knowledge of the Java MapReduce job. You can access them with a basic idea of SQL query. To write a query in a business school, the database has to be gone through the complicated uh, that is your uh, extract transformation and load that is your ETL cycle but the, the Impala this procedure is shortened the time consuming stage of loading and re reorganizing is overcome with the new technique such as exploration data analysis and data discovery make the process faster and your Impala is pioneer the use of your parquet file format a columnar storage layout that optimize the large scale queries typically in the warehouse scenario data warehouse scenario we have very big, very big data uh, data sets are there we can like uh, i will say like uh, if we talk about the features of your impala so impala is available freely as it is an open source with your apache license it is available with your Hadoop installation, so no, no worries at all. Apart, your Impala supports in memory processing. You can access data using Impala using SQL query, SQL like queries. Impala provides you fast access for data in HDFS when compared to the other SQL engines. So it is comparing itself with uh, Pig and uh, uh, Hive. It is uh, uh, Using Impala, you can store data in the storage system like HDFS, your Apache HBase, or Amazon S3. You can integrate Impala and business integration tools like Tableau and Pentaho and uh, another one like uh, Zoom Data and other one. Uh, that is. Uh, and uh, th th these business intelligent tools when we talk about these business intelligent tools they are uh, uh, helpful for visualizing the data and uh, you can get output uh, as per your business need uh, impala supports various file formats okay like avro parke and rc files and other ones uh, Impala uses metadata and uh, ODBC drivers and SQL syntaxes from Apache Hive. Okay, so not much about your uh, uh, Impala we have seen right now, and uh, again, when we talk about syntax and all those things you will find uh, the syntax as same as your sql one there is no uh, something very uh, new is introduced in that now we will talk about uh, one more uh, that is your part of your uh, Hadoop ecosystem that is OZ. So, Apache OZ uh, is a workflow system. Okay, so uh, like Apache OZ is a server based workflow scheduler scheduling system to manage, manage Hadoop jobs. Okay. So we already used one word scheduler when we were talking about uh, scoop that we can schedule things using uh, 
like if i want to every every one hour i want to move the data of table to hdfs then i need something so it is directly done using your scoop as well as you can use uzi at that particular place and you can achieve your objective okay workflow in uzi are defined as a collection of control flow and action nodes in a directed acyclic graph control flow node define the beginning and the end of the workflow that is start and end failure nodes as well as the mechanism to control the workflow execution uh, execution path decision scope and job nodes action nodes are the mechanism by which workflow triggers the execution of computation processing task uzi provides supports for different type of action including hadoop map reduce hadoop distributed file systems operations pig ssh emails uzi can also extended to support additional type of action okay so guys i think you got an uh, idea that what is what can be done using uzi okay so we have sequence of jobs uh like consider an example of college okay we uh some guy um uh, is uh, interested to take admission in engineering uh, we asked him to fill all the details also upload all the documents and uh, then my workflow starts it checks all the documents it validates all the things uh, at different level there are different people or different managers which will be involved to validate the things every process validation should be completed there should not be one uh, a single failure in the system and when all the document documents are verified then we uh, verify the data which is filled by the system uh, with, within the system by the student and then we assign a branch to that student now student has already filled his choice three choices are there suppose he is putting uh computer science then it and then uh, electronics and telecommunication we check that on the basis of percentage and all the other uh, things whether he is eligible for that or not so this complete process is going through your uh, uzi and uh, we are performing all all these steps by that my validation if it is failing then i will get a notification for that yes uh, at this level uh, this guy means like if if uh, one of the mark sheet it is showing that he is flunk in a subject so then he will not get the opportunity to go for uh, engineering and uh, so my workflow engine take cares of everything on different level we uh, we write uh, code for that for validating the things and then ultimately we achieve our objective okay now we are now with uh, uh, this is one of the simple uh, flow, workflow diagram right here we start we do a hive job in then then go then shell jobs then pick jobs are there we join all those uh, all together then we make a decision yes or no and then after that we move ahead okay we move ahead and ultimately it can be a shell or a hive job and then we land up that okay that 
this is the, this need to be ended at that particular what is the objective is like objective is to uh, simplify the things means like if we are going through a process if we are going through a process or if we are going what we are trying to do is we are automating all the job and uh, we are providing a flow to it and then last of us uh, we are achieving the objective which we have decided so this is the overall about your uzi okay so uzi is used a lot uh, in your hadoop okay uh, following three types of jobs are common in uzi that is workflow and then your coordinator and then bundle so all about it now next is your u that is h u e so what is u uh, u is a gui gui it is again graphical user interface okay so no uh, lot many of you are using gui tools gui applications these gui applications they help you to perform lot many operations at one place okay so for example uh, for uh, your sql pl sql we use sql developer or we use toad so what we do is we connect it to database so once my uh, gui is connected to database this toad or sql developer once it is connected then all the remaining operations can be done with the help of your gui okay so if if i am using toad then i can create a database using toad toad i can drop a database using toad i can do query i can connect to infinite number of uh, uh, connections data database connections and then i can perform all the jobs at from one place so it is making the life of developer easy now the same stuff is right here in the case of your uh, in the case of your oz sorry in the case of your uh, you that what you are doing is you are doing all the jobs at one place so its interface look like this so now you can connect to any database which is available with your hadoop ecosystem so like it is a hive big impala and n number of things okay you want to do map to this program and you want to do lot many things you want to write uh, procedures for your uc and you want to compile it you want to do so everything you can do at one place that is uc so uc gives you freedom to connect anything so now uh, earlier what we were used to do is we go to the command line uh, window and then we give the commands well, our first job is to run the connect command then we used to connect to that particular database and then so right here you have everything in front of you and that to be uh, visually available you uh, if inside impala if you have 10 database then you can connect to any one of them you can access the tables you can Uh, you can perform other jobs as well you can run your queries extract the data and there is there is there is no count of this much so if you want to see that what are the things you can connect so this is the list which is <coughs> list of connections which are available 
uh, with you with your you and it is uh, this uh, list is available on your official website of you so you can go there and you can check it out you can connect to your i impala my sequel Astro, Oracle, this, that, and uh, your Google, BigQuery, Teradata, DB2, Apache, S SQL, Spark, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. You can connect to database. You can connect to different storages, like your uh, HDFS storage, S3, Amazon S3 storage, Azure file system, G GCS, uh, uh, Apache, Ozone, Edgebase. You can connect to metadata, and you can connect to different jobs as well so again i hope it is clear to all of you that my uh, view is a interface who is a gui who is a graphical user interface where you like you, what you have to do is you have to open your uh, hadoop and then you directly need to connect to you and from you you can do your all operations okay no need to individually go to any uh go to pig or go to uh, 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 your impala or go to your hive and other stuff and uh, connect to it and do your work with it so this is uh one of the easiest way or uh, to perform this okay now uh, let's move to the next one now so that is your cassandra okay now we are coming to uh, uh, different database okay we are not going to talk too much about all this okay we are not going to talk uh, too much about all this and uh, because like there is lot much things uh, as as a technology it, it comprises of not many things. It is not uh, small stuff. We, like in uh, past four hours, we, uh, three hours, we have talked about uh, so many technologies and so many things. Uh, so, uh, let us understand main features of your Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra is again, uh, is a free open, open source distributed uh, no sql database okay so again what is no sql database we will understand that as well uh, in short and uh, understand this uh, management system designed to handle large amount of data across many commodity servers provided high availability with no single point failure cassandra offer offers robust support for clustering, spanning, uh, multiple data centers with asynchronized masterless uh, applications, allowing low latency operations for all clients. Cassandra offers distribution design of <coughs> Amazon Dynamo the database with uh, data module of Google's Big Table. We will talk about the main features. So, Cassandra is a distributed system, support replica and multiple data center replication. Then it gives you feature of scalability, fault tolerance, tolerance. Uh, tunable component, uh, consistency, map reduce support, query languages, and your eventual consistency. When we talk about NoSQL database, so a NoSQL database, sometimes called as not only SQL, is a database that provides a mechanism to store and retrieve data other than the tabular relation used in relational database. These databases are schema-free 
support easy replication have simple api eventually consist and can handle huge amount of data the primary objective of no sql database is simplicity in design horizontal scaling and finer control over ability no sql database uses different data structure compared to the relational data uh, relational database it makes some operation faster in sql sorry in no sql the suitab <coughs> the suitability of given no sql database depends on the problem is must solve so uh, like traditionally what we are doing in our relational database we so we we have rows and columns in that and we are putting the data uh, like uh, in rows and columns format and each cell each cell contains uh, um, a single information right there now in the case of no sql database what they do is they uh some i will say like they put complete set of data in one cell okay and that is the approach they follow for no sql database okay and uh, there are like same as your cassandra there are uh, multiple no sql database uh, you know, right there one is your edge base and another is your mongodb edge base is a open source no relational distributed database module from google big table and written in java it is developed as a part of your apache hadoop projects and runs on the top of hdfs providing big table like capabilities for hadoop Second one is your MongoDB is a cross-platform, document-oriented table system, uh, uh, database system that avoids using the traditional table-based relational database structure in the favor of JSON-like documents and dynamically schema. With dynamic schema, makes the integration of the data in the certain types of application easier and faster. So uh, we we will run through another is uh, like your MongoDB and we will uh, see HFS as well. Uh, one moment. Yeah. So main feature of your uh, MongoDB. So again, uh, your MongoDB is ad hoc query uh, stuff. Uh, it gives you indexing it gives you replication load balancing it gives you file storage aggregation server sites java execution and tapping collection and transaction stuff okay so that is about your mongodb okay we uh, like uh, like advantages of your uh, is uh, your mongodb is schema less then you have structure of single object is clear then no complex joins in that you can do tuning in that you can easily scale out mongodb is quite easy for scaling then your conversion and other things okay uh why use mongodb that's a good question okay so why to use mongodb and why not to use cassandra or edge based so mongodb provides you document oriented storage data is stored in the form of json style document we already talked about no sql database and uh, i told you it is not saving the data in cell 
seen as a single object or single element kind of thing. It saves complete set of data. So same is has been followed in the case of your MongoDB. Indexing on any attribute, replication, uh, replication and high availability. So we talked about replication and we also talked about high availability uh, in previous uh, HD uh, when we were doing uh, Hadoop distribution file system. So high availability means uh, if my one replication is fail, still uh, my second replication will help out me to reach up to that particular objective. We uh, like we we have uh, normally we follow minimum three replication uh, stuff in many cases or for few organizations or uh, in specific search uh, scenarios they follow more applications as well. We took example of Google where they were following uh, six replication at a time. Uh, and that is the reason of high availability. Then auto shedding, rich query, fast in place updates and professional support by MongoDB. Okay. And where to use MongoDB? So in case of your big data, content management and delivery, mobile and social infrastructure and user data management and data hub. So these are the things where you can use your MongoDB. Now, the next one is your edge base. So again, this will expect it, it, it will be a repeated kind of story. So Edgebase is an open source, no relational, distributed database module from Google's big table and written in Java. Okay. Now it is developed as part of your Apache Software Foundation Apache Hadoop project and run on the top of HDFS provides big table like capabilities for Hadoop. That is, it provides fault, tol fault tolerance and way of storing large query in sparse data, small amount of information for like a large collection of empty unimportant data such as finding the 50 large items or in a group of 2 billion records and finding zero, non-zero items and presenting less than 0.1% of the huge collection. So, lot many uh, benefits and features which are right here you can see in the case of your edge base. Edge base is part of your Hadoop ecosystem. What are the limitations of Hadoop in the case of this? Uh, when we talk about it, uh, Yeah, uh, so you know, again, your edge base is uh, part of your Hadoop uh, uh, ecosystem, and uh, you can query the data and you can uh, retrieve the uh, data in, uh, in a faster manner with the help of your edge base. And uh, edge base is like a white column store and has uh, and has been widely adopted because of the lineage with Hadoop and HDFS. HBase run on the top of HDFS and well suited for fast reading and writing operations on the large data set with high throughput and low in out that is input output latency. So that is these are the features of your Edge base. <clears throat> now, uh, this is the last one that is 
Spark. Now, when we are talking about Spark, so Spark is again an open source distributed general purpose cluster uh, computing framework. Sparks provide an interface for programming, uh, programming entire clusters with implicit data parallelism and fault tolerance. Originally developed in the University of California, Berkeley, uh, AMPL Lab and Spark code is largely central. Okay. Uh, Spark is uh, basically um, uh, in memory computation, works on in memory computation. Okay. It, it doesn't uh, follow the traditional stuff. Okay. Spark has an its, uh, uh, its architectural foundation is the Resilient Distribution Dataset, RDD. A read-only multi-set of data item distributed over the cluster of machines that is maintained in the fault tolerance, tolerance way. Okay. Uh, Spark was introduced uh, somewhere in uh, year no, 2012. And uh, uh, with it, there are multiple components which are introduced right there. So one was your streaming, one is SQL, uh, then you have uh, your ML and you have graphs and Spark 4. Okay. Uh, due to these, uh, uh, these new features, actually uh, in the architecture of your Uh, Hadoop ecosystem, Spark directly interact with HDFS. It directly uh, interact with HDFS. It, uh, I will say, uh, ignore map reviews and it it, it, it doesn't uh, and it interacts directly and patches the information and perform lot many jobs. Spark is very popular and uh, it is used in lot many companies these days uh, because spark overcome all the other stuff means like when we talk about uh, when we say high faith impala or we talk about other other things which are there right uh, you know, for connecting and for patching the data and all those things so spark at one place it has provided all the solutions and that's why it is very popular okay uh, feature of uh, apache spark feed so that is the first one spark helps to run an application on the hadoop cluster up to 100 times faster in memory and 10 times faster with the running on the disk this is possible by reducing the number of read and write operations of to the disk it stores the intermediate process in the data in memory. So where I already told you that Spark works on in-memory concept. That's why it is super fast. Then uh, supporting multiple languages. So we already talked about that. Uh, like uh, languages which are supported right here is Java, Scala, and Python. Therefore, you can write application in different languages. Spark can uh, Spark come up with 80 high-level operations for interactive queries. And advanced analysis is possible. Spark not only support map and reduce, it also support SQL queries, streaming, machine learning, and graphic logarithm. Okay, so these are the things which uh, are part of your Hadoop ecosystem. Okay, now uh, we, we already uh, gone through all the elements which are there uh, in your, uh, within your Hadoop system, uh, Hadoop ecosystem, sorry. And uh, we understood that what are the different things which are possible 
with that okay now uh, as for the agenda we uh, completed all the stuff and now we are landing up to the uh, use cases and we will see all the use cases one by one and understand that how uh, it is done in your uh, mistake we will see the solution how hadoop is handling those things and how this particular is implemented with the help of hadoop so first uh, first user case is uh, where uh, we are making backup of uh, one so, uh, use cases, its description is the data analytics currently keep 18 months of CRM data in RDBMS and 15 years of archived data in tapes. The data analytics wants to move the tape backup to HDFS backup, access the data easier, can be uh, use the commodity hardware with the potential to move to the cloud no online backup required and provides ad hoc query capabilities on the data now what they are talking about right here is they uh, there is a company name as d data analytics and this company d data analytics they have crm system uh, which comprise of uh, nearly 16 17 years of data with them out of that 15 years of data that is available in their archive in the form of tape and they have live data with them of 18 months okay what they are doing is like they want now to move all the data okay in hdfs and what is the reason behind that like it is uh, it is cheap it is reliable it is uh, you can have uh, capacity of querying the data and lot many other things right there and uh, you ultimately uh, ultimately you can achieve lot many things with this okay so what next you uh, you have a source that is your rdbms then you have data type so like you have numeric data and other like stuff with that and you have uh, historical data with you because we were talking about 15 years of uh, 15 years of data is in the archive and uh, what you are doing right here you are pulling and pushing the things okay you are taking the data from your rdbms and when you want to so you have performing both kind of things that is read and write right there and uh you have good response time as compared to other one and you are doing not many things right here so what is uh what is what we are doing right here is so uh, we are using two on the first uh, in the first stage we are using uh for importing and exporting the data importing and exporting so from rdbms to our hdfs and then for other queries and other uh, uh, ad hoc reports what we are doing is we are using impala in this solution so in using impala i can create reports and i'm getting output of that next is we have something uh, uh for media files so what is what we have like abc enterprise has a uh, uh, contact center with the uh, where all calls are recorded these call need to be archived for statutory reasons and analysis abc enterprise wanted to move the data from tape to uh, some online archive and provides the ad hoc query capabilities okay now 
again we have something right here is like source is your uh, contact center recording solution your data type is media files mode is historical you need to pull the data so uh, your data acquisition is uh, this one and uh, then you uh, frequency is uh, every one day you are doing this particular thing you are performing uh, your write operation once and read operations many times okay so uh, where we can see that uh, your response time is as good as possible right here and you can see like that you uh, you have media files at one source using ftp scheduler you are moving it so as these are media files you are using to to move the data and then it is going to hdfs then you are performing some analysis on it and you are also using right here mysql and then last one is you are generating reports for different <coughs> different scenarios now we have something uh, sentiment analysis for uh so zeta pro news corporation tracks popular topics in the social media and uses them to their news report they want to automate system to capture social media interaction on the popular topics and do real time sentiment analysis sentiment analysis need to summarize and archive for the further analysis too so what we are doing right here is we are taking the data from twitter and uh, your facebook social media popular new topics so all the popular topics which we are patching with the, this one data is of type json or xml or uh, such format we have uh, it is purely real time data so as this is a streaming data we are using kafka right here and then uh, operation is push operation okay push operation means data is pushing in the system is coming in the system okay what we are doing is we are analyzing the data so Streaming data is there. We are using Kafka. So Kafka provides scalable real-time transport for data, and it has interface to the Twitter streaming data as well as uh, Spark one. And we are using Cassandra right here. Store the data by topics. The social media would be used as a key right here. then we are using uh, spark for real time computation we are using spark uh spark streaming right here and then ultimately uh, we are generating news summary now we we are taking a topic that is uh, credit card or new use case that is for credit card fraud detection uh we talked about it when we were talking about uh, data insertion data ingestion was when we were doing when we were doing data ingestion so what is the situation right here is uh, uh Max and Max system runs a web-based real uh, retail solution where customers can order any kind of product like Amazon. Uh, sometimes credit card thieves use stole the credit card information to make purchases. This later result in lo loss in revenue. Max and Max system needs a real-time credit card fraud detection system so that the purchases is blocked. before it complete 
we already talked about this particular thing that using kafka uh your real time credit card fraud detection is uh, taken care okay so if they find it it is really uh, very fast it is not even in seconds it is in milliseconds the things are happening and they are doing all the things so sources coming like your internet web transactions and uh, your data is coming uh, from some crm system or something like that uh, it is absolutely pure real time streaming data and uh, you don't need to do anything in that it is purely push now uh, data is coming to kafka and it is going to uh, right here it is going to your mongodb and Mongo, at mongodb we are performing something uh, where uh, analyzing the data and all these things we are also using spark streaming right here and using spark streaming we are also analyzing the data we find and immediately report about those transactions which are considered to be fraud so your uh, uh, kafka is playing an important role mongodb is there spark is there and uh, <clears throat> now your next your next use case uh, right here what you have your uh, venu classic systems run a cloud based data center with uh, hundreds of vm nodes these data center need a uh, need to keep 24 7 or means like they want to keep it operational 24 7 to help management they want setup and reporting analysis system that will provide the uh, following stuff so once your real time node health monitoring then history root cause analysis for the problem periodic node failure and they need to architect a big data solution to achieve the same so what they are doing right here so uh, they are keeping uh server logs uh, data is in form of text they have real time data data is pushed to the system with the help of your uh, uh room and uh, other operations like uh, we will see right operations are performing so what we are getting is we are getting log files and using our room we are pushing it to cassandra and hdfs both and we are using uh, apache spark right here and we are also using some uh, reporting tool which can be a third party tool somewhere uh, in between and uh, using uh, Apache Spark, we can do the advanced advanced analysis work in this particular solution. Now, use case number six. Uh, news article recommendation. So, what we are do doing right here is uh, Pinto News Corporation uh hosted uh, host a website where users can read articles about various day-to-day -day happenings for uh, every registration users who log in pinto news wanted to provide a list of recommendation news in real time articles you might like okay they want to build a web uh, web click analysis and predicting system system right here okay so again 
right here what we are doing is we are the source of data is my web client events data type is text then uh, and i will say url uh, we have something uh, little bit of uh, real time and historical data uh, push operation is happening because all data is coming from uh, other system to sbs everything is real time so it, is, it must be uh, go to kafka and uh, right here what we are doing is we, uh, we are using neo4j and we are also using hdfs so all the events are going and they are coming from uh, with the help of uh, your apache kafka and uh, few things which are getting processed uh, and right here your advanced analytics work is done with the help of your apache kafka okay now my next test case or uh, use case is where i am analyzing my customers overall purchases and everything in that okay so uh bitter kanika corporation produces and sells computer and accessories it want to track the manage uh, track and manage all the information about their customers and create a customer 360 report so website activities purchase history issue contact and center history and social media uh it then want to use this information for prospective selling when customer visit uh, website and when customer call call center so these are the things what they are doing right here so right here if you can see the input is coming from four different system one is your browser social media crm system and contact center or your call center or whatever you want to say so for your crm and contact center we are using scoop because the data is structured one and the another one is your live data which is coming through kafka we are using two different systems one is your one is your hdfs and another is your mongodb and using spark we are performing our advanced analysis work and we are we are also using a third party uh, tool for reporting now we have a uh, little bit complex problem right here uh, hampshire car uh, car company wanted to connect cars in real time to analysis engine car cars have multiple sensors sensor data need to be analyzed real time historical to generate alarms for possible failure to the driver hampshire needs to it needs a satellite enabled data collection and alarm system back to uh, backed by the big data infrastructure okay so what they are looking is uh, something which is nowadays very popular one that is your uh, cars should be iot enabled okay now we have to collect all the data uh run time data or whatever you want to say because if they are tracking the car 
and they need the failure information and all these things. So there are lots many things right here. So uh, car sensor collectors it collects the data uh, somewhere and then it moves using Zoom to HDVS as well as to using Spark streaming. Then some analysis advanced advanced analysis is performed using your uh, Apache Spa. Uh, data is with HDFS as well as with Cassandra. And then you have uh, I will say third party uh, or custom this one for your alarming uh, things. So there will be an alarm system where it will warn the uh, driver that yes you will you, you may be landing into trouble so guys we uh, we talked uh, we talked about hadoop we talked about big data we talked about uh, hadoop ecosystem and at last we took nearly eight test cases or use cases of your big data Hadoop and its ecosystems uh, uh, right here uh, that how the solution is implemented and how things are right here. So I hope I help you all to understand these things uh, well in uh, DK and uh, I hope that you people uh, will upgrade yourself by this, this knowledge and uh, learn more on these topics so my best wishes are with you uh, this is one of the complex uh, uh, i will say representation of your hadoop ecosystem uh, it is just for your reference not for any this thing uh so thank you very much and uh, all the best to all of you